I just played a lot of Commander, and so I tried out some unexpected cards that performed really well. Hey everyone, my name is DJ, this is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and you know, we see cards, we know we want to play with them, but sometimes we don't know how they're going to perform. I got to try out a few cards that were huge overperformers, I'm going to share them with you right now. The first card is Auton Soldier. Auton Soldier is four blue blue for a zero zero artifact creature alien soldier. You may have Auton Soldier enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it isn't legendary, it is an artifact in addition to its other types and has Myriad. Any deck that wants to run clones has a ton of different options. And so you get to choose what you really want. Auton Soldier is on the fun end of the spectrum. Giving Myriad is so much fun, and it was a huge overperformer for me this weekend. The Archon of Cruelty that I copied and then Myriaded was by far the Magical Christmas Land ceiling of the card, but actually it was totally fine. I copied a Tygon Predator and got a few really good triggers. Honestly, it is the fun end of the spectrum. If you're looking for the more competitive clone from this set, uh, Flesh Duplicate, a blue blue for zero zero creature shapeshifter revel. You may have Flesh Duplicate enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it has vanishing three. If that creature doesn't have vanishing. Honestly, we have so many different clones to choose from, and a lot of them have different strengths. You know, Flesh Duplicate, it has the strength of being able to cost very little mana for hopefully copying something big and impactful. Auton Soldier has the benefit of turning something myriad that doesn't deserve to have myriad. And I really liked that fun aspect. Now, Auton Soldier is not surprising anyone. It is one of the most popular and most expensive cards from the Doctor Who set. Coming in at around $8.50, it's definitely pricey. And it's seeing a lot of play, but it's mostly seeing play in Doctor Who sort of commander decks. So I definitely hope that it branches out into other styles of deck. Next up is Alpha Deathclaw. Alpha Deathclaw is four black green for a 6-6 creature lizard mutant with menace trample. And when Alpha Deathclaw enters the battlefield or becomes monstrous, destroy target permanent. For five black green, monstrosity four. That means that if it's not monstrous, you put four plus and plus one counters on it, making it a 10-10 menace trample. And of course, you get to destroy another target permanent. Alpha Deathclaw just did what I wanted it to do. It was big. Its stats are amazing. Like six, six menace trample. Monstrous 4, 10, 10 Menace Trample, just solid, but then it answers whatever you need to answer. Look, I love creatures that come in and do something. Like, I've been playing a lot of Necron Deathmark, and it's been really, really performing. But sometimes I need to take out that critical artifact or enchantment. It's not always just about creatures. You know, it has me thinking of Meteor Golem, which is not a great comparison because no one's excited by Meteor Golem. But Meteor Golem reached, you know, staple status. It got included in a bunch of different commander decks because it's super flexible. But as soon as you take a mana off of that cost and make it really big and relevant body, and then you add the activated ability to take something else out, make it a two for one or a three for one, then Alpha Deathclaw becomes really, really desirable. In fact, I was reaching into my graveyard for Alpha Deathmark over and over again this weekend. I had other options like a Grave Titan, I had an Elder Gargaroth, and all of those seemed good, but I just wanted the thing that killed what my opponents were doing. And that was Alpha Deathclaw. Coming in at 75 cents, it's a great deal. I would put it in creature strategies, reanimator strategies, anything that can weaponize that trigger or recur the body. And then finally, one of the biggest surprises of the weekend was Smuggler's Surprise. Smuggler's Surprise is a single green mana for an instant. It has Spree, which means you can choose one or more additional costs. For one plus two, that's three total mana, mill four cards. You may put up to two creature and or land cards from among the milled cards into your hand. For four green plus the additional green, so that's six mana total, you may put up to two creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Okay? And for one plus that additional green, so two mana, creatures you control with power four or greater gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. And then of course with Spree, you can combine all of these. So if you did every single mode on here, it's nine mana. Um, but that's a very you know specific set of things that you're getting with Smuggler Surprise. 
Smuggler's Surprise was doing more than I asked of it. Um, it was in a deck that wanted to cheat big things into play. And so I was mainly playing it for the six mana mode. Hey, I've got some big creatures. I wanna put two Galtas onto the battlefield at once and do something gross. You know, that was the fun reason to include Smuggler's Surprise, but that wasn't its main use. Throughout the weekend, I've been using it for the heroic intervention mode. You know, one in a green, creatures you control with power four greater gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. That served me so well. Yeah, some of my mana creatures, my mana dorks and chili creatures, they all died, but I kept my important creatures. That was so critical. And of course, I, I run Heroic Intervention, so it's a card and an effect that I already want, and it's just included on the other mode. And then another time in this weekend, you know, I was playing it for its first mode, green and two, mill four cards, you may put up to two creature and or land cards from among the milled cards into your hand. This mode was, I better just spew off the smuggler surprise and hope to hit my land drops, and I did and that just let me not miss a land drop, get to the next stage in the game, and really just stay in it. It was so important. In fact, cards that let you smooth your deck, and make sure that you're drawing lands when you need to, or drawing action when you need to, are super duper good. They're just, they're just really important for you to have good games of magic. And so I cannot stress enough how much Smuggler Surprise and cards like it are gonna be really, really good in your decks. You know, smooth out your draws. Yes, three mana is a lot to smooth out your draws, but if you need to, you need to smooth out your draws. You know, protect your assets. When you have something big on the battlefield, don't get blown out by board wipe, protect them. And then when you wanna have fun and put something stupid onto the battlefield, there's that middle mode, six mana, spew things on the battlefield, destroy everyone. This card was flexible in the exact ways I needed it to be. Um, just gonna be a staple for sure. Coming in at $1.75, you should pick yourself up a copy of Smuggler's Surprise. All right, these are the three specific cards that were really overperformers as I played this weekend. It was just super fun, and each one of these cards I was impressed by. I was like, oh, cool, great, great job. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is DJ. This is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.